The sun was setting on the beach where an older man sat, his young companion enraptured by the story he was telling. He spoke of two worlds, the one humans inhabited and the one belonging to the gods. In the godly realm, power was divided between three kingdoms, each with its own ruler. The kingdom of water was the most powerful, and its leader, known as the emperor of the god world, was chosen by finding three magical stones on earth before ascending to the throne. In the realm of the gods, the high priest sensed it was time for a new emperor after 3,000 years. The candidate was to be Habek, a proud and aloof god from the water kingdom. When the priest called on Habek to confirm his destiny, the young god was dismissive, seemingly unconcerned by the weight of his fate. The priest then instructed Habek to journey to earth and find the three magic stones before the last tide to prove himself worthy of the throne. The great priest cautioned Habek before he descended to earth, warning him that the human world was vastly different from the divine world. Habek, however, arrogantly brushed off the advice, believing his power would easily locate the three stones. The great priest, still concerned, gave Habek an object to aid him, but the conceited god refused it, dismissing its usefulness. The priest, however, forced Habek to take it, knowing it would be crucial to enlist the help of a human servant of the gods in generations to come. And so, Habek and his servant, Nam Suri, descended to earth. In the human world, we meet Dr. Yoon so -ah, a psychiatric doctor treating a male patient with a mental disorder. The patient believes that the world is on the brink of destruction from an imminent alien attack, and he alone holds the knowledge to save it. When the patient speaks to so -ah in an alien language, she responds dismissively, triggering the patient's fury at her disbelief. Luckily, so -ah's assistant was on hand to calm down her agitated patient. <laughs> Later, however, the duo discovered several warning letters from the bank, leaving so ah bewildered as her clinic remained empty. Seeking solace, they went out for a drink, but their respite was short-lived as assistant Choi handed her an unpaid land tax bill, sending so ah spiraling. Seeking refuge under a tree, she unearthed a diamond ring given to her by her ex. While she didn't want to part with it, she needed the money to pay her mounting bills. Desperate to realize her dream of living in Vanuatu, so ah witnessed a light crashing into her and knocking her out. Upon regaining consciousness, she discovered the light was actually Habek, who had landed on Earth naked. He quickly dressed in Soa's clothes and left, unaware that he had taken her diamond ring. When Soa woke up and realized the theft, she screamed and accused Habek of being a thief. Hei, in turn, felt humiliated by the accusation and retreated. Not long after arriving on Earth, Habek meets his servant, Suri, who urges him to change clothes and also informs him that he has lost his powers as a water god. Habek tries to use his powers on a leaf, but to his dismay, it doesn't work. Habek feels defeated and wants to return to the divine world, but Suri tells him that it's not possible until they complete their mission. Suri advises Habek to find the human servant as instructed by the high priest. However, Habek faces another setback when he realizes that he has also lost the object given to him by the high priest. Suri leaves to look for clothes and food, leaving Habek alone to ponder about his lost powers. He wonders whether it is a temporary situation, like the time when he visited the Sky Kingdom. Shortly after his failed attempt at creating a fountain, Habek tried to offer anything to Soa in exchange for the clothes he was wearing. Soa, who thought Habek might be mentally ill, eventually asked for money in return. Habek, unfamiliar with human currency, was puzzled by the concept. Soa realized her mistake and left, but not before assistant Choi gave Habek her business card. Later, Suri found a temporary place for Habek and him, but Habek refused it, claiming that his power had returned. However, when he attempted to create gold, he produced only a useless stone. Habek eventually ended up in a makeshift shelter made of balloons near the city's river. Despite being a future god emperor, Habek was now homeless in the human world. So I was desperate for cash, brainstorming ways to make money quickly. She couldn't help but envy Habek's carefree attitude towards wealth. The following day, Habek found himself in a remote location, where he learned that the land's owner was one of his human servants. Soon after, So ah appeared, intending to sell the land. Habek was convinced that So ah was the servant he had been searching for, causing him to treat her like an employer. Confused and ready to leave, So ah was stopped in her tracks when Suri accidentally collided with her car. Oh, <laughs> With no other options, so I agreed to let the duo tag along. Unfortunately, things took a turn for the worse when they ran out of gas and got lost. Habek sent Suri to find fuel, and they ended up stranded in the car together. So I couldn't understand why Habek believed he was the water god, but his answer only left her feeling more confused. To clear their heads, they decided to drive around aimlessly. As fate would have it, they encountered another mishap when a wild boar pursued them, causing them to seek refuge in the car's trunk.
Fortunately, Suri saved the day by scaring the animal off and bringing back the much-needed gasoline. Once they arrived home, Soa couldn't help but wonder how Habek knew how to drive a car despite claiming to be unfamiliar with money and modern technologies. Habek revealed that he had been carefully observing her every move while she was driving, eager to learn from her. This revelation caused Soa to freak out, demanding that Habek leave and never come back. Habek continued to insist that Soa was obligated to serve him as her ancestors had given themselves to the gods. However, Soa had grown tired of his incessant rambling and decided to leave. Just as she was about to go, Habek surprised her by kissing her and declaring that she should be honored to be kissed by a god. Suri quickly intervened and whisked Habek away before Soa could react. Shortly after, Soa screamed, prompting Habek to assume that she wasn't satisfied with just the kiss. Suri scolded Habek, calling his actions despicable and immoral. Back at her house, Soa couldn't stop thinking about the kiss. It had left her so restless that she couldn't even sleep peacefully. <sighs> The following day, Habek was bewildered by the large crowd gathering in the park. Suri explained that it was Sunday, a day off for many. Suri, who knew Habek's ability to quickly master anything, suggested that they participate in a skateboarding competition that offered a substantial prize. They needed the money to survive, and Habek was hesitant at first, but eventually agreed. His stunning performance during the competition made the crowd go wild. As fate would have it, Soa witnessed his remarkable skills and Habek was immediately smitten with her. However, Soa had to quickly escape from Habek due to her deep-seated fear of water, a result of a past trauma. Later, it was revealed that Habek did not receive the prize money from the competition committee because they mistook him for a professional athlete. Despite his disappointment, Habek remembered Soa's business card and invited Suri to accompany him to her workplace. Soa had just received terrible news from assistant Choi when she decided to cross the street. However, she noticed an old man beside her struggling to make it across safely. So, Soa slowed down and helped him cross. This act of kindness caught the attention of Habek and a man in a car, who couldn't take their eyes off her. Soon after, Habek appeared beside her, and Soa was taken aback. Habek realized that Soa had recognized him as her employer and ordered her to prepare a place for him to stay, food, and money to carry out his mission. Soa was in no position to provide this as she was already struggling to make ends meet. In desperation, she turned to Suri for help, urging him to take Habek away and seek help from social services. If Suri refused, Soa threatened to report them to the police. As Soa prepared to leave, Habek warned her that if she left now, she would be forfeiting her role as a divine servant. But to Habek's surprise, Soa was not bothered by this and told him that she was happy to end their relationship. However, soon after this exchange, strange things started happening to Soa. She was suddenly able to hear the inner thoughts of those around her. Meanwhile, Habek, still upset with Soa, found some solace when Suri took him to the spot where he had buried some gold. But to their dismay, they discovered that the place was now a bustling city. While there, they encountered an old man who abruptly kissed Habek. It turned out that the old man was a vengeful god who held a grudge against Habek. On the other hand, Soa finally got a chance to meet with the building owner, Mr. Shin Dong Man, to plead for leniency regarding the increased rent. During the meeting, a man who had witnessed Soa helping the old man cross the street was also present. However, Mr. Shin was unsympathetic to Soa's plight and warned her to leave if she couldn't afford the rent. This left Soa feeling even more confused and unsure about her future. As Soa was on her way home, assistant Choi gave her more bad news, her patient had escaped. Meanwhile, Habek and Suri were on the train, and Habek began to feel hunger pangs, just like a normal human being. Then, he caught sight of someone he thought was the goddess of heaven on someone's phone. He followed the owner of the phone and accidentally got separated from Suri, who was left on the train. Habek met a mental patient named Ma Bong Yol at the train station. Bong Yol was being searched for by a woman named Soa. Bong Yol was drawn to Habek because he saw a unique aura around him. Habek invited Bong Yol to his home and Bong Yol brought lots of food as an offering. So I tracked them down through Bong Yol's social media and arrived at Habek's residence. Bong Yol told Habek that he was the savior of the earth from an upcoming alien attack, but Habek didn't believe him. This made Bong Yol go crazy and he jumped into the river. Soa, uh, who was traumatized by the water, didn't know how to save Bong Yol. Fortunately, Habek jumped into the river and rescued Bong Yol from drowning. 
so I was grateful and hugged Ha Beck tightly while thanking him. Bong Yul was rushed to the hospital and So I asked Ha Beck if he had been living in the area. However, Ha Beck was still furious and demanded that So Ah leave immediately. As she was leaving, So Ah heard a voice accusing her of being ungrateful and shameless after being helped by God. The voice grew louder and clearer, causing So Ah to become extremely anxious. She sought the help of her psychic friend, Jo Yo Ami, who suggested that the voice may be a manifestation of So Ah's guilt towards Bong Yul. This only served to make So Ah wonder if she was also guilty of wrongdoing towards Ha Beck. As Ha Beck tried to locate the sky goddess, Mu Ra, he enlisted the help of his friend Suri. They attempted to buy a phone on credit, but without identification, they were unsuccessful. Meanwhile, So Ah, who appeared to be losing her mind due to incessant voices in her head, showed up at Ha Beck's place in a terrible state. She hoped that being there would stop the voices, but they only grew louder. At a reunion event, So Ah continued to hear the voices until a woman with a grudge against her family insulted her father, causing So Ah to lose her temper. Knowing that the woman was Mr. Shin's granddaughter and any retaliation would only worsen the situation, So Ah lashed out with words and then walked away, ignoring the commotion that followed. As Jaya was about to chase after So Ah, Ha Beck intervened and took her away, dressing her in a suit. He then asked her to be his guarantor for a cell phone loan, which she agreed to. So I asked why he needed the phone, and Habek revealed that he believed the goddess of heaven, Mura, was inside it. So I found this idea odd, but Habek was enthusiastic about sharing the world of gods and the beauty of Mura. The next day, Habek asked Soa to accompany him to meet Mura. She was hesitant at first but followed him inside the building, where they encountered the stunning goddess. However, Mura, sensing Habek's arrival, ordered her bodyguards to drive him away, despite his status as a future god emperor. Soa couldn't help but think that Habek was truly crazy for believing that a top model named Hei Ra was the goddess he sought. So I had come to assist Habek when he suddenly stumbled and fell, which enraged him. <laughs> Soon after, Mu Ra appeared and slapped Ha Beck, which made So Ah furious. She asked Ha Beck to leave and handed Mu Ra her business card. Meanwhile, the man who had shown interest in So Ah turned out to be Hu Ye, the owner of the agency that Mu Ra worked for. As Mu Ra fretted over slapping Ha Beck, she contacted Bi Ryoam, the god of Earth, who harbored a grudge against Ha Beck and had been eagerly anticipating his arrival on Earth. As it turned out, So Ah had brought Ha Beck to Yoam Mi's place to investigate the strange occurrences surrounding him. Ha Beck felt humiliated by So Ah's constant disbelief in his godly status, causing them to argue and part ways once again. Suddenly, a mysterious man took So Ah to the roof of a building and pushed her off. Ha Beck, witnessing the fall, leaped to save her and regained his strength in the process. So Ah, who had witnessed the strange event, fell unconscious, while Su Ri was excited to see his master's strength return. However, when they attempted to test Ha Beck's powers by turning stone into gold, they still failed. Su Ri was left bewildered by his master's unstable abilities. So Ah woke up from what she thought was a dream only to be terrified by what was beside her. The man who wanted to harm her had left a menacing impression on her, causing her to flee to her car in fear. Ha Beck unexpectedly appeared and offered to drive her home, but So Ah was too shaken to open the car door. Eventually, Su Ri convinced So Ah to allow Ha Beck and him to stay at her house. As they lived together, Ha Beck and So Ah grew closer, but Ha Beck's suspicions were raised when he noticed a suspicious man near So Ah's home. Meanwhile, So Ah verified the genealogy of the gods that Ha Beck had told her and was shocked to find out that it was true. She contacted Yo and Mi for answers, but Yo and Mi was unavailable as she was camping in the mountains. As soon as So Ah woke up in the morning, she remembered that if Ha Beck was truly a god, he could use his powers to help her with her financial struggles. Excited, she went to see Ha Beck, only to find out from Su Ri that his powers had disappeared. Su Ri explained to her that Ha Beck's mission on Earth was to collect magic stones from Mu Ra and Bi Ryoam, but without his powers, the mission became much more difficult. So I was shocked to learn that Habek had been alive for 28 years and was focused on this fact rather than the current problem. Habek asked Soa to buy him good, branded clothes for his meeting with Mu Ra, but she objected at first. However, she eventually bought him street clothes as a thank you for saving her. Habek went to meet Mu Ra, but she refused to help him and give him the magic stone, as she believed he was not yet fit to be the emperor of the gods. Habek felt betrayed, but he could not do anything because his powers had not returned. Mu Ra was terrified after realizing how she had treated Habek, knowing he had the power to turn her into a fish. She immediately contacted Bi Ryoam to arrange a meeting with Habek. As Habek was leaving Mu Ra's place, he saw So Ah speaking with Hu Ye about the sale of her land. Habek grew increasingly jealous and uneasy as So Ah had not returned home by evening. 
Little did he know, So Ah was actually celebrating the sale of her land with assistant Choi. Ha Baek waited for So Ah on the side of the road until she finally showed up, surprised to see him there. He explained he was there to do something to regain his strength. Ha Baek wrote their names on the wall, marking the occasion as his first time writing. The next day, Habek returned to Mura to convince her he was fit to be emperor, but she still refused to give him the magic stone. Little did he know, Mura had an agreement with Biryoam not to give the stone away. Frustrated and confused, Habek asked Soa to take him to the most beautiful place on earth. She agreed, despite feeling dizzy. Here you are. On their way home, Habek's strange behavior surprised Soa, but he had sensed that her car had been sabotaged. Habek's driving skill saved them both from a dangerous accident caused by faulty brakes. Suri, who had survived the ordeal, was happy to see her master's strength had returned. He then revealed to Soa that his power only returned when she was in danger. Habek helped catch the person who had wanted to harm Soa. The next day, Soa owed Habek a life debt, so she went out of her way to please him. She purchased a large bucket for him to take a bath since Habek was fond of bathing with fresh water in the godly world. Habek then asked Soa to prepare some tasty meals for him since he was getting hungry. Soa was overwhelmed by Habek's demands, but she felt obliged to fulfill them because Habek had saved her life. However, all of her attempts at cooking ended up as failures, and they had to resort to eating instead noodles. Knowing that Habek was capable of anything with just a glance, so I decided to play a cooking show on TV and challenged Habek to cook instead. At first, Habek refused, but with a little teasing from Soa, he finally displayed his culinary abilities. After savoring Habek's mouth-watering cuisine, Soa opened up about a man who had been threatening her. As it turned out, the man had previously run into her, resulting in his first jail sentence. Meanwhile, Mura was swimming when Biryoam approached her. Despite her fear of Habek's wrath, Mura asked for Biryoam's assistance in locating a magical stone. Biryoam agreed to help, suggesting that they stall for time until Habek lost interest. During their conversation, Mura updated Biryoam on Habek's condition, revealing that he had lost his power and was being cared for by a female servant named Soa. As soon as Biryoam heard Soa's name, he called Habek to come immediately. Suri and Soa were forced to accompany him, and they all arrived at Biryoam's place. However, when Soa realized that Biryoam was her college friend, she immediately lost consciousness, creating tension among the group. As Soa lay unconscious, Biryoam revealed that Habek had lost his powers and boasted about his own power. He refused to give Habek the magic stone he possessed until Habek proved himself worthy of being an emperor. Habek, who had been betrayed by his friends, vowed to become a better emperor than his predecessors. Habek wasted no time and carried the unconscious Soa back home. However, upon awakening, Habek scolded Soa for being too close to Biryoam, assuming she had feelings for him. Habek then met Mura again, begging for the magic stone and pleading for her trust, but she refused. Meanwhile, Biryoam had sinister plans to kidnap Soa to turn her against Habek. He believed that with his powers, he could fulfill all of Soa's desires. Biryoam even went as far as to ask Soa to drug Habek's drink, but she vehemently refused, much to his anger. Shortly after, Habek arrived with the help of Mura. However, this only fueled Biryoam's desire to use Soa's power. Losing his patience, Habek demanded to know why Biryoam and Mura hadn't given up the magic stone. To everyone's surprise, it was revealed that the stone had been lost all along. Biryoam, feeling terrified, ceased his actions towards Soa and Mura even went so far as to accuse Biryoam of being the one responsible for losing the stone. Soa, who was still in shock from Biryoam's actions, slapped him and walked away. <sighs> With Soa gone, Habek took matters into his own hands and gave Biryoam a well-deserved beating for his unruly behavior. Habek was worried about Soa's absence from home and couldn't help but imagine the worst. He soon discovered that Soa had been visiting her mother's grave to mourn. When she returned home, Habek was waiting for her on the street, and Soa wasted no time in questioning why her ancestors had to pay the price of being servants to the gods. Habek realized that Soa was still carrying the burden of her ancestors' betrayal, and he vowed to protect her from any harm going forward. The following day, Habek met with Mura and Biryom to figure out how they had lost the magic stone. It turned out that their childish behavior led to a fight over the stone, which ultimately led to its disappearance. Mura and Biryom blamed each other, causing Habek to become emotional. 
Birium even went as far as to say that finding the stone wouldn't be challenging if Habek hadn't lost the coordinates. While in the elevator, Mu Ra discussed Yu Song Yu, the god guarding the third stone. She believed that Song Yu had all three stones, but it had been ages since she last saw him. Mu Ra apologized to Habek and hugged him. Later, Habek contacted Soa to take him to the place where he first arrived on Earth to find the lost coordinates. Unfortunately, they didn't find the spot, so Habek suggested they take a picture together instead. On their way back, Soa received news that Yoami had returned home, and she invited Ha back to Yoami's place. Yoami suggested that Soa consult with her teacher, who turned out to be a greedy god that Ha Bek immediately attacked after learning he had kissed Yoami. After the incident, Ha Bek grew tired and hungry, and he asked Soa to take him to a restaurant. Soa mistakenly believed that Ha Bek's strength returned after he kissed the ravenous god, but Su re-corrected her, explaining that Ha Bek regained his power upon returning to the god's world. Soa had finally begun to relax in Ha Bek's presence when he gave her a torn letter, which turned out to be a purchase agreement for the land she had lost. Habek revealed that he didn't approve of her decision to sell the land, insisting it was a gift from God. But Soa was in desperate need of money and felt that Habek couldn't understand her situation. She left abruptly, feeling misunderstood. Habek chased after her, finding her in an emotional state. Soa confessed that she had never felt favored by anyone until Habek appeared in her life, and that made her feel incredibly lucky. But she ultimately let go of his hand and called Huye to discuss the land purchase issue again. Then she left Habek alone, and she was confused and uncertain about her feelings. Just as Soa was crossing the road, a truck suddenly hit her, leaving her in a precarious condition. Habek ran a check on her, but she had disappeared, saved by Birioam, who had been following them. Despite being saved, Soa was still disappointed and angry with Habek, who seemed to care very little about what had just happened to her. Even when Birioam asked about her condition, Soa remained silent and left in a huff. Determined to sell her land, Soa went to see Huye, but he informed her that the process would take some time to complete. However, before she left, he invited her to help him clean his garden. Meanwhile, Habek waited for Soa's return by the side of the road, but she arrived home with Huye. It was evident from Huye's behavior that he had taken an interest in her. Although Habek promised to protect her, Soa no longer believed him, as she was still disappointed and angry about his behavior earlier. Mura updated Birioam on Song Yu's location, as she had developed feelings for Habek and wanted to retrieve the three stones to send him back to the god's world. The following day, Huye called Soa to discuss the land sale, which brought her immense joy as she was in dire need of the money. Habek, however, grew jealous after seeing her happy expression, assuming she was speaking with another man. Later, Soa felt envious after finding out that Mu Ra had gifted Habek with expensive clothes. As Soa left for work, Habek visited her estate with Mu Ra, searching for Song Yu's whereabouts, as that was the last place he was seen. As Habek and Mu Ra were exploring the land of the gods, they stumbled upon a mysterious rock with blood stains on it. Mu Ra used her powers to investigate and confirm that it was human blood. This revelation shocked them both, as it was believed to be impossible for humans to even set foot in the realm of the gods, let alone leave traces of their blood. Meanwhile, Huye was tending to his farm with the help of a young, blind girl. As they went about their business, a caterpillar landed on the girl's hand. In a split second, Huye reacted and removed the caterpillar, but to his astonishment, it immediately burst into flames. Habek and Mura were on a mission to find the greedy god, but Mura couldn't help but notice that Habek seemed to be getting too comfortable living among humans. She reminded him of the urgency of their task and begged him to return to the world of the gods before it was too late. Habek was torn between his desire to stay on earth and his duty to the gods. Later, when Habek stumbled upon Soa with Huye after selling the land, he realized realized that his lingering feelings for her were what kept him tethered to the human world. But when Habek informed Soa that he had to leave soon, her heart sank. Habek gave her permission to sell the land as she pleased, but her sadness over his departure kept her up all night. Mura sought out Birioam for answers about the greedy god, as she had a pressing question for him. Meanwhile, a group of low-level gods were in the midst of a meeting when Birioam and Mura stormed in, causing chaos and panic among the attendees. They managed to capture the greedy god, Jugolrin, and presented him to Habek for questioning about the mysterious blood stains. Trembling with fear, Golrin revealed that the blood was likely that of a demigod. Habek spotted Huye talking to Soa and immediately approached them. In a hushed tone, Habek confided in Huye that the blood stains he found belonged to him. As Huye was trying to process the shocking revelation about his possible demigod status, Mura confronted Habek about his disrespectful behavior towards Huye, who happened to be the CEO of her agency. Habek defended himself by suggesting that Huye may have been involved in the disappearance of Song Yu, and that he could also be the owner of the blood stain they found. Birioam was greatly troubled by this news, as the existence of demigods was a source of shame for his kingdom. 
The origin of demigods dated back to an earth god breaking the rules by marrying a human, and the implications of Hu Ye potentially being a demigod could be far-reaching and problematic. Habek wasted no time and headed straight to Soa's clinic to inquire about her relationship with Hu Ye. Soa clarified that she and Hu Ye were just acquaintances with no romantic connection, but she didn't stop there. Soa decided to take Habek to an unfamiliar place before he returned to the world of gods. When Habek returned home, Soa finally revealed her desire to meet her father, who had been missing. As they conversed, Soa couldn't help but ask Habek what he had told Huye about her. Habek's response, a simple warning to keep away from his woman, hearing that immediately made Soa misbehave. The following day, Huye returned to Soa's clinic under the pretense of seeking psychiatric help for his recent insomnia. Soa, being a psychiatrist herself, quickly realized that Huye's problems were far from sleep-related, and so she confronted him about it. Finally, Huye revealed that he was considered a disgrace to his family and was even locked up by his father because he was seen as a monster. One winter night, his father had thrown him out, leaving him in critical condition outside the gate to the world of gods. As Huye recounted his painful story to Soa, he also revealed that his true intention for seeking her out was to uncover her true identity. He wondered how Soa, a mere mortal, could possibly know the three great gods, Habek, Mura, and Biryoam. As it turned out, Biryoam had ordered his men to keep tabs on Huye, hoping to confirm whether he was a demigod or not. Biryoam even went as far as trying to cause a car accident to harm Huye, but thankfully Mu Ra intervened just in time. If Huye was not a demigod, Biryoam's actions would have made him unable to return to the world of gods for harming innocent humans. Meanwhile, Soa was still basking in the afterglow of Habek's affection when she was unexpectedly visited by Yoami. Yoami revealed that she had developed feelings for Suri, leaving Soa in a state of confusion. Meanwhile, Habek sought out Huye to confirm his suspicions that he was a demigod. While there, Habek noticed a symbol on Huye's body that belonged to San Yu. Before any confrontation could occur, Mu Ra appeared and pulled Habek back, warning him that Huye might have the power to kill gods. The following day, on her way to work, So I asked Suri about the consequences of selling her arid land. Suri warned that such a move would tarnish Habek's reputation as the future god emperor. Upon hearing the explanation, So I was quick to take action. She grabbed the land purchase agreement and headed straight to Huye's place to put an end to their agreement. However, her decision sparked a chain of events that would leave them all in peril. Soon after, Soa received a call from Habek, urgently requesting to meet with her. Meanwhile, Huye was also contacted by Biryoam, who invited him to meet up somewhere. At first, Huye was hesitant to accept the invitation, but when Biryoam threatened the safety of the little boy who was always with him, Huye had no choice but to comply with the request. As soon as Huye arrived at the meeting place, Biryoam made it clear that he despised Huye because he was seen as a disgrace to the gods. Mura then questioned how the San Yu symbol ended up on Huye's body. Huye revealed that the mark was a result of an incident when he was struck by lightning and saved by San Yu. Upon hearing this, Mura became emotional, expressing that Huye should not have left San Yu behind. Huye explained that he was too young to comprehend what had happened at that time. Meanwhile, Soai anxiously waited for Habek to arrive. Upon his arrival, he immediately asked for her Vanuatu map as he had just realized that the coordinates he had been searching for were on her map. Habek used the map to locate Song Yu and eventually found him, although he had lost his memory due to a previous lightning strike. The situation had become increasingly complicated, with Habek, Mura, and Biryoam unable to find any information about the magic stone they had been searching for. Mura felt threatened by Soa's presence and quickly dismissed her from the meeting, making it clear that the gathering was not meant for ordinary humans. Once Soa had left, Mura urged Habek to return to the land of the gods as soon as possible, warning him that Soa's presence had clouded his judgment and that something would happen to her if he continued to stay on Earth. Meanwhile, Soa felt lost without Habek by her side. She feared that he would leave her for good and longed for his comforting presence. However, her fears were momentarily eased when Habek contacted her and invited her to meet him. Overjoyed, Soa rushed to his side and embraced him tightly, savoring every moment they had together. The following day, Huye was haunted by Biryoam's words about being able to kill with just one touch. His fears were confirmed when he accidentally touched a flower and watched it wither away in his hand. To his horror, his assistant witnessed the event and demanded an explanation. Meanwhile, Golreen, who knew Huye well, warned him about the gods' wrath. He advised Huye to be careful because the gods would now see him as a threat, given his newfound powers. As the night fell, Soa and Habek returned from the hot springs 
things, unaware that they were being watched by Hu Ye and Golreen. Curiosity got the better of Hu Ye as he asked why So Ah was able to recognize the gods. Golreen explained that her family's ancestor was punished for committing a heinous sin, making them servants of the gods for generations. Golreen saw an opportunity and suggested that Hu Ye make So Ah his life companion. She would understand his personality better because of her family's history with the gods. This suggestion only fueled Hu Ye's interest in So Ah even more, as he longed for her love. Meanwhile, So Ah was nursing a wound from her fall and Ha Bek was attempting to heal her with his powers, to no avail. As Bi Ryoam and Mu Ra returned from the set, they bumped into Hu Ye again, stirring up Bi Ryoam's anger. Bi Ryoam accused Hu Ye of causing San Yu's memory loss. Mu Ra scolded Bi Ryoam for holding a grudge against Hu Ye and acting impulsively. Meanwhile, Hu Ye, back in his room, was reminded of the land he was going to purchase from So Ah. This triggered his memory of their first encounter, when Bi Ryoam had attacked him for stepping on the holy land of the gods. Hu Ye revealed that the land belonged to So Ah and sought to buy it. Bi Ryoam, feeling uneasy about the idea, went to Ha Bek for advice. Ha Bek explained that the ownership of the land would not threaten the existence of the gate to the world of gods. However, Bi Ryoam was still worried that the demigods owning the land would cause the gate to be closed off. Bi Ryoam urged Ha Bek to take action and not let his feelings for So Ah cloud his judgment. Later, Bi Ryoam learned that So Ah was meeting Hu Ye. The scene shifted to So Ah meeting Hu Ye to back out of their deal. Hu Ye asked for an explanation, and So Ah revealed that the land was a gift from her father, making it too precious to sell. Meanwhile, Ha Bek was waiting outside and felt emotional, assuming that So Ah had a romantic relationship with Hu Ye. Later, Hu Ye met with Ha Bek and assured him that he would protect So Ah if Ha Bek returned to his world. After the meeting, Ha Bek, still misunderstanding the situation, became angry with So Ah. But So Ah explained that she cancelled the sale to show her appreciation for Ha Bek. This gesture made Ha Bek realize how sincere and loving So Ah was. When So Ah began to cry, Ha Bek kissed her passionately. After their kiss, Habek received a call from Mu Ra informing him that Song Yu had woken up. Upon arriving, Habek finally collected the three magic stones, a necessary condition for him to ascend to the throne as emperor. However, instead of feeling elated, Habek looked gloomy because it meant that he had to say goodbye to So Ah. When he got home, Song Yu asked him why he looked sad, but Ha Bek could only remain silent. The next day, with mixed emotions, Ha Bek tried to see So Ah, but she ignored him. At work, So Ah received a call from Hu Ye, who invited her to discuss the penalty for cancelling the land sale. Hu Ye then made an offer for So Ah to become his personal psychiatrist instead of paying the penalty. This offer was clearly a ploy to get closer to her. So Ah discussed the offer with Yo and Mi, who advised her to accept it to advance her career. However, So Ah's heart wanted something else, even though she knew it would soon come to an end. End. So Ah rushed home, her mind consumed with the decision she had to make. She was caught in a dilemma, constantly reminding herself that Ha Bek would leave her soon. When she reached her house, Ha Bek was waiting for her, as he usually did. This time, So Ah couldn't keep her thoughts to herself any longer. She confided in Ha Bek, telling him that she had decided to quit their relationship because she believed that fate would eventually separate them. Ha Bek was saddened by her decision, but he promised to support her, no matter what path she chose. The following day, Song Yu finally understood Ha Bek's unhappiness, and suggested that he end things with So Ah and return to the world of the gods. Song Yu knew that the longer Ha Bek waited, the more he and So Ah would suffer. Meanwhile, in a different location, Bi Ryoam attempted to provoke Hu Ye by ordering two low-level gods to attack him. Hu Ye, who had run out of patience, was about to retaliate, but Golreen intervened just in time. Soon after, Bi Ryoam called and admitted to ordering the attack on Hu Ye. Furious, Hu Ye demanded to know why Bi Ryoam would do such a thing to him. As Ha Bek reminisced about Hu Ye's advice to win over So Ah, he came across an old man selling items on a cart. Out of kindness, Ha Bek assisted the man, who gave him money as a token of gratitude. This was the first time Ha Bek had earned money through his hard work. With the money, he purchased a pair of glasses as a gift for So Ah, even though he didn't have enough funds. However, due to his charming appearance, the seller requested him to model for the glasses and paid him extra cash. Ha Bek then asked So Ah to meet him at a cafe, where he gave her the glasses as a keepsake. So Ah asked him where he got the money, and he told her he earned it through his part-time job. This gesture made So Ah feel deeply touched by Ha Bek's sincerity towards her. 
However, that night, while So Ah was still at the clinic, Hu Ye, who was drunk, visited her. So Ah tried to help him but ended up triggering his evil personality and he nearly hurt her. Fortunately, Ha Bek arrived just in time to protect her. So Ah hated exchange ensued between the two men, but So Ah intervened and asked Hu Ye to leave. However, Ha Bek, who was overwhelmed by emotions, accused So Ah of being intimate with Hu Ye, and she responded that their relationship was over and he had no right to pry into her life. The following day, Hu Ye was still grappling with the burden of responsibility for the gods' deaths in the past. Golreen reassured him that he wasn't to blame and that he was a good person. However, after meeting Ha Bek and the other gods, Hu Ye began to lose his sense of self. Meanwhile, Mu Ra and Bi Ryoam were at their apartment. Knowing Bi Ryoam's intentions towards Hu Ye, Mu Ra vowed to keep an eye on her and cancelled all her shooting schedules. Ha Bek, still upset, asked Bi Ryoam to drink with him. Bi Ryoam, who was with Mu Ra, managed to deceive her and escape with Ha Bek. After arriving at the cafe, Biryoam gave Habek a bottle of drink, causing him to become drunk for the first time. Biryoam took advantage of the situation and recorded Habek's drunken antics, but their fun was interrupted when some men tried to extort Habek. Biryoam had to step in and fight them off. <laughs> As Soa returns home, she is caught off guard by the arrival of Habek who is heavily intoxicated. As she attempts to guide him to her room, they both stumble and Habek confesses his feelings to her. The following day, Biryoam shares footage of Habek's drunken antics with Mu Ra, who becomes deeply concerned. Meanwhile, Habek spends time with Soa and reads to her from a book. The words he reads evoke such powerful emotions in Soa that she breaks down in tears, feeling as though they represent their shared experiences. While enjoying their meal, Habek made a promise to Soa that he would fulfill any wish of hers once he regained his strength. Later, Habek prepared to indulge in his favorite hobby, which was bathing. However, Soa suggested they take a trip to the beach, a place that was intimately connected with Habek as the god of water. Together, they went shopping for ingredients to prepare for their vacation. When it was time to cook, Soaya's food was a mess and looked unappetizing, while Habek's food was meticulously arranged and aesthetically pleasing. Mura was waiting for Biryoam to go to the gym when she stumbled upon a recording on his cell phone. It was Habek, who was drunk and professed his love for Soa, saying that he wanted to stay with her forever in the human world. Mura, immediately consumed by jealousy, went straight to Soa's house to confront her. Habek and Soa were taken aback by Mura's sudden arrival, but before they could even react, Mura kidnapped Soa and whisked her away to another place. Mura explained to Soa that her ancestors were once servants of the gods, and it was all because of a tragic love story involving Habek and a human woman. The woman was ordered by the god emperor to seize power from Habek, but she fell in love with him instead. When she was offered immortality by the emperor, she betrayed Habek and was ultimately executed by the gods. In return for her forgiveness, the woman's brother asked that her descendants become servants of the gods. So I was heartbroken by the story, feeling that it was unfair for her to bear the burden of her ancestors' mistakes. She believed that she did nothing wrong, and that it was not her fault that her bloodline was chosen to serve the gods. Habek couldn't shake off the feeling of unease as Soa had not returned home yet. Finally, she appeared with a nonchalant expression, but Habek sensed that something was amiss. He asked her what Mura had said, but Soa remained silent and urged him to return to his own world. It turned out that Mura had warned Habek that he would lose his destiny as a god emperor if he didn't return to his place of origin. Soa, believing in destiny, decided to let go of her desire to be with Habek, leaving him heartbroken. The next day, Habek and Sue remet Soa to bid their goodbyes and return her cell phone. Habek advised Soa to take care of herself and not eat too many instant noodles, leaving her in tears. As they parted ways, Mura grew closer to Biryoam and even practiced her kissing technique, which had previously caused her co-stars to faint due to her strength. Meanwhile, Soa finds solace in keeping herself busy with treating patients at her crowded clinic. Although she is still grieving, she is determined to live a better life. One day, Hu Ye pays a visit to her clinic seeking advice on how to deal with Biryoam, who has been bothering him. Soa, who no longer wishes to deal with the gods, advises Hu Ye to not overthink the situation. Later, Hu Ye invites Soa to have dinner with him at a restaurant, but their secret meeting is accidentally witnessed by Biryoam and Mura. Upon seeing Hu Ye getting closer to Soa, Biryoam becomes upset and vows to take action against her. He leaves Mura behind and instructs his men to take her home. 
On his way home, Hu Ye tries to win over So Ah's heart by giving her a doll, but the gesture only triggers memories of Ha Bek, who once gave her a pair of glasses. So Ah politely declines Hu Ye's advances and excuses herself, claiming that she needs to rest. As soon as she arrives home, So Ah can't help but reminisce about Ha Bek, imagining him waiting for her on the side of the road. To alleviate her yearning for him, she wears the glasses he once wore and reads the same books he used to read. However, instead of lessening her longing, these actions only serve to remind So Ah even more of Ha Bek. Even while she's at the clinic, So Ah can't help but imagine Ha Bek standing in front of her. Yoami has a vision of a wet man whom she believes to be Ha Bek, and she contacts So Ah to inquire about her birth date in hopes of interpreting her fortune. However, their conversation is interrupted by a call from assistant Choi, who informs So Ah that her clinic is being seized due to unpaid bills. So Ah and Yoami rush to the clinic, where they find her possessions being confiscated by debt collectors. Amidst the chaos, So Ah is helped by Bong Yol, a patient who frequently talks to her about aliens. <laughs> But the situation escalates, and the police are called. Fortunately, Hu Ye arrives to sort out the matter. Later, Hu Ye invites So Ah to grab a drink, but she declines, feeling exhausted by the day's events. As she walks home, her phone falls when she spots Ha Bek waiting for her across the street. Overcome with emotion, So Ah rushes to embrace Ha Bek. Meanwhile, Hu Ye, who had been trailing So Ah, witnesses the encounter and struggles to contain his jealousy. Ha Bek explains that he and Su Ri have been assigned by the High Priestess to discover the meaning of life, and this mission has allowed him to reunite with So Ah, whom he is thrilled to see again. Ha Bek couldn't resist his desire and kiss So Ah once again, making it even harder for Hu Ye, who still hoped to win So Ah's heart. Despite Mu Ra's promise to assist him, Ha Bek's return had made things more complicated. The following day, So Ah woke up in disbelief that Ha Bek was with her again, prompting her to rush upstairs to see him. Su Ri couldn't help but notice So Ah's unusual behavior, and as Ha Bek and Su Ri were preparing to leave, So Ah revealed that her clinic was closed for some time. She wasn't concerned about the business's financial status because she was content with Ha Bek's presence, convinced that his divine power could fulfill all her wishes. Su Ri reminded her that Ha Bek's abilities were not to be used for such trivial matters, as it was his duty to seek the meaning of life. So Ah was taken aback by the news she just heard. Meanwhile, Su Ri and Ha Bek boasted about their new identity cards that would allow them to secure temporary jobs. As for Mu Ra and Bi Ryoam, they were anxiously waiting for Ha Bek's return, and Mu Ra was trying to perfect her kissing skills with a doll. Luckily, Bi Ryoam arrived just in time to give her some helpful tips. Meanwhile, Golreen was trying to cheer up Hu Ye, who was feeling rejected by So Ah. Golreen urged Hu Ye not to give up on winning So Ah's heart. Bi Ryoam was taken aback by Ha Bek's sudden return and couldn't help but wonder why he had come back. Meanwhile, Mu Ra became even more envious, thinking that the only reason Ha Bek had returned was to see So Ah again. After Mu Ra left, Bi Ryoam warned Ha Bek not to toy with Mu Ra's feelings and threatened to become his enemy if he did. Meanwhile, Hu Ye was still with Golreen when Mu Ra showed up with a plan to help him win So Ah's heart. However, Hu Ye declined her offer, realizing that his current strength was no match for Ha Bek's. Just as things were getting tense, Bi Ryoam arrived and hit Hu Ye before leaving with Mu Ra. Bi Ryoam had finally had enough and challenged Hu Ye to a fight to the death. Worried that something bad might happen, So Ah immediately called Ha Bek for help. Hu Ye was getting beaten badly by Bi Ryoam, but this time he fought back and managed to take down Bi Ryoam's men, even though he protected Bi Ryoam from harm. Finally, Ha Bek and Mu Ra arrived to put an end to the fight between Bi Ryoam and Hu Ye. It was then revealed that Bi Ryoam's hatred towards Hu Ye stemmed from the fact that Hu Ye had killed Bi Ryoam's twin brother in the past. In a different location, So Ah, who was anxiously waiting for news from Ha Bek, realized that Hu Ye was also a god. She came to this realization after learning that Bi Ryoam was highly interested in Hu Ye. Hu Ye was in a state of distress as he was reminded of his past experiences. Meanwhile, upon arriving home, Ha Bek was met by So Ah, who inquired about Hu Ye's godly status. Ha Bek was rendered speechless upon hearing this, but So Ah persisted with her inquiries, causing Ha Bek to feel angry and resentful towards her for being overly interested in Hu Ye. The next day, Ha Bek met with Bi Ryoam to learn more about Hu Ye's past. Bi Ryoam, still visibly shaken, recounted how Hu Ye had possessed the power to kill gods. When Bi Ryoam had first encountered Hu Ye, he was unaware of the boy's abilities and had encountered him with a human woman who was being held captive by the Jade Emperor. Hu Ye had killed all of the Emperor's troops in an effort to protect the woman, inadvertently killing Bi Ryoam's twin brother in the process. 
Habeck was furious with B. Rioam for keeping such an important matter from him. However, his anger was short-lived when B. Rioam's men arrived, accompanied by Mu Ra, who was already aware of the situation. Mu Ra slapped Habeck, blaming him for the tragic incident involving Hu Ye. She believed that it was Habeck's fault for telling B. Rioam to search for the woman in the first place. If Habeck had not intervened, the incident would never have occurred. As soon as Habeck returned home, he hugged Soa tightly, still feeling guilty for what happened earlier. Soa realized that Habeck hadn't eaten, so she asked for permission to go out and buy some food. While she was outside, a mysterious figure snatched her away. Habeck raced to find her, and when he did, he discovered that Golreen had taken her. Golreen was hoping Soa could help Huye, who was going through a tough time. But when Soa got to Huye, he was too scared to talk, and she embraced him to make him feel better. Habeck was worried sick about Soa and got a call from her saying that she was fine with Hu Ye. But he urged her to come home immediately as being near Hu Ye was dangerous. Soa, being a psychiatrist, tried to convince Hu Ye that he could be the person she knew before even though he felt like his past sins were unforgivable. Soa reminded him of all the good he had done and helped him regain consciousness. When Soa finally arrived home, Habeck showered her with love by kissing her passionately. The following day, Soa received an invitation to meet Huye again. When they met, Huye thanked her for helping him find his true self. Later, Soa and Habek spent time on the beach, and she opened up to him about her past. Soa used to live a happy life until her father suddenly left without explanation. She wanted to find him and ask why he left. On their way home, they met Mura, who had a message from the high priestess, Habek had to return to the world of gods within a week. This news left Habek indecisive, and Soa tried to be strong for him, even though she wasn't ready for him to leave. The next day, Soa took Habek to a bridge that held a painful memory for her. She had considered ending her own life by jumping off the bridge, but something strange happened. Even though she jumped into the river, she survived. As the day went on, Yoami had a sudden realization about her vision from the previous day. She immediately went to Soa's house to share the news. Yoami claimed that Soa was saved by a middle-aged man and not Habek as they had previously thought. Soa was skeptical at first, but when Yoami saw a photo of her father, she realized that the man who saved her was actually her own father. This left Soa feeling confused and uncertain about what to think. Habek, on the other hand, was irritated by Yoami's presence and urged her to leave so they could have some alone time. Despite Soa's initial disbelief, Yoami continued to insist that it was indeed her father who saved her. However, Soa was adamant that her father was never there for her and never once saved her from anything. On the flip side, Song Yu rushed to Habek to report that his precious marker was gone. But Habek was too preoccupied with spending quality time with Soa and suggested that Song Yu seek help from Mu Ra and B. Ryoam instead. Later on, Song Yu approached Mu Ra and explained that the marker was most likely stolen by a mortal. However, B. Ryoam was quick to dismiss the idea, claiming that humans are unable to see the marker's existence. This marker, given to Habek, was a powerful tool that only the gods and their faithful servants could see. It was known to fulfill any wish made by the gods' followers. Song Yu was on a mission to find his missing marker, and he decided to seek Hu Ye's help. Song Yu asked Hu Ye if he remembered the man who brought them to the hospital, suspecting that he might be the culprit. Hu Ye recalled a middle-aged man who helped them and then promptly left, saying he had to rush back to see his daughter. Upon hearing this, Song Yu immediately thought of Soa's father, a faithful servant of the gods, and headed straight to Soa's place. He asked Soa where she was on the night of the incident, and she remembered that she was on the bridge contemplating suicide. Habek was worried about Soa's state of mind and quickly took Song Yu to a private room to discuss the matter. Song Yu shared his theory that Soa's father might have taken his marker to save her. He believed that Soa's father used the marker to locate her and intervene, preventing her from taking her own life. Habek immediately realized the reason behind Soa's miraculous survival and rushed to the bridge to investigate. He then broke the news to Soa that he had found her missing father. Soa was in disbelief, but Habek explained that her father had used the powerful marker to save her life that fateful night. However, this act of heroism cost him his own life. Soa was devastated by the loss of her father and pleaded with Habek to bring him back. But Habek knew it was impossible. He struggled with the decision to leave Soa, who was still grieving, but ultimately decided to stay by her side. The next day, Habek took Soa to the riverbank and kissed her. Unbeknownst to Soa, the kiss was a ritual that transferred Habek's remaining strength to her, allowing her to retrieve her father's body. Soa was understandably worried about Habek's well-being after he transferred his remaining strength to her. Meanwhile, Habek was determined to keep his promise of granting Soa's request to see her father once again. However, Mu Ra was furious at Habek's reckless behavior. Despite the potential danger, Habek plunged into the river with Soa to retrieve her father's body. Now, 
they managed to give him a proper burial, and surprisingly, Habek emerged unscathed. Shortly after, Mura arrived and praised Soa for using her father's marker to ask Habek for help, which resulted in his rescue. However, it was now time for Habek to return to the world of gods, leaving Soa behind. Just then, the high priest appeared and revealed that he had been watching over them all along, ensuring that Habek's mission was accomplished, and that Soa was the last descendant destined to serve the gods. As a reward, Soa was given the chance to make any request, and she asked that Habek stay with her until she died. Habek agreed, but he had to return to the world of gods for his coronation as emperor. Months later, as Soa returned home from work, she was overjoyed to see Habek waiting for her on the side of the road, just as he always had. The moral lesson from this drama is don't judge others based on their appearance or circumstances, keep an open mind and treat everyone with respect and kindness. People may surprise you with their kindness and intelligence, regardless of their status or background.